last week in which we took a look at the potential route of the north-south Metrolink light rail. Uh, and you are talking now, as I wrote about Monday, and I know you talked about last night in a meeting uh, uh, about the NGA, about really pushing hard to expand our Metro uh, link in the city and get that north-south route built. Tell me about your efforts. Yeah, this, uh, this north-south uh, Metro link idea is not anything that's new. Uh, it was something that actually was it brought up first, as I recall, somewhere around uh, in the year 2000. Um, but then in 2008, uh, 2007, the East-West Gateway Council of Governments uh, uh, supported a um, uh, preferred uh, alternative for um, a, a Metrolink uh, extension. That, you know, that's something that's been actually talked about since Metrolink was first built uh, many, many years ago. And so the north-south uh, the north-south version of the uh, Metrolink expansion was one that was supported by East-West Gateway Council of Governments, which is our uh, regional uh, planning, metropolitan planning organization. Uh, that you know, That's what we need the approval. It's a regional agency that helps with that. But what, we're, um, what this is about is um, really making sure that we connect our region better, connect people to jobs, connect them to, uh, uh, you know, for, so they can get to, their, get to the store, or get to a doctor's office, um, uh, or even, you know, go uh, places that they want to go, visit relatives, where, whatever they want to go and wherever they want to, whatever they want to do to have uh, easy access to uh, transit, uh, economically, uh, environmentally uh, r- responsible, and all the other things that, that goes with it. But more importantly, it's really um, a, a pipeline to opportunity. Uh, we have a... Um, uh, of course, after uh, the events of Ferguson, I think w- that which really had shown a uh, uh, spotlight on many issues and challenges facing our region and our nation, uh, racial disparities, poverty, crime, education, job opportunities, access to opportunities. Uh, these are all things that um, that we all as, as a region and a nation have to do a better job in, in making sure we address. Connecting people to opportunities is really, really important. Uh, studies have shown that uh, close access to, to really quality transit uh, really does help people uh, with upward mobility, help them improve themselves, help them get to jobs. And uh, this north-south uh, Metrolink is something that, that will uh, address that. Uh, and so it's something that I'm, this is at the top of my list of priorities uh, in my next, uh, bef- before uh, I finish this term, uh, before I finish my tenure as, as mayor of the city of St. Louis. I think it's that important. Uh, it's something that's going to be very difficult to get done, but everybody pulling together and pushing hard with a vision that's, that's plain to see and with the purpose that's, uh, that, that's you know, well stated is something I think we can get done. But you know, certainly it's going to take about 10 years to get done, but you know, every major effort you know, starts with uh, you know, some uh, you know, first steps. You talked about the difficulty, Mayor, and I think the biggest difficulty probably comes down to that price tag, which for the full north-south build-out going all the way through the city and the county is, is somewhere in the range of $2 billion. Where is the city, is the county, uh, where are we going to find the money for that? Well, it's, it is uh, going to be uh, a, in order to do that, it's going to take a uh, a regional effort, basically. Uh, certainly, we're going to be doing our part in the in the city. Uh, I've talked with uh, County Executive uh, Stephen Stinger and his, and his staff and my staff have been talking as well. They're they're evaluating various options themselves. Of course, it would be great if we, uh, in fact, ideal if we would all come together and uh, go in in a same direction. And I think together, working together, I think we'll be able to do that. But it's going to be uh, accessing a lot of different uh, pots of money uh, at the federal level, uh, hope, uh, possibly at the state level, and even at, at the local level with various types of, uh, of you know, tax incentives as well as possibly you know, maybe some tax increases that, that we'd have to go to the voters and get support of it. At this point, we don't have it all laid out, uh, but there are federal resources which would require a significant local match uh, there are, um, like, there's Tiger Grants. We've gotten some Tiger Grants for some things already in the past. Um, they average, you know, 10 to $20 million. Uh, and, you know, to get things, uh, that, that, all these things help. 
Uh, there's some value capture opportunities through, uh, for example, tax increment financing or uh, some kind of a uh, transportation development district. Those are all things that would have to be vetted and looked at. And again, there's some possibilities of maybe raising some taxes. I know that uh, for transit, we usually have, uh, we do have uh, sales taxes. I know the county has a quarter cent more than we do, I believe, uh, for transit. So that's something we can look at. But these are all things that we'd have to discuss and, um, you know, figure out how we're all going to move forward together to address these. But local, the local dollars uh, to, to match federal resources is going to be essential. Mayor, I know you, you haven't endorsed a, a replacement yet. A lot of people are talking about running for mayor. Do you believe that any serious candidate for mayor in 2017 has to be endorsing North-South Metrolink expansion? I think that uh, they, they're, they're going to have to talk about, they're, they're going to have to talk specifically about transportation. Uh, and North-South Metrolink, I believe, is something that is, I'd like to see candidates endorse and get behind. Uh, it's that essential to our uh, to our future. More and more people are wanting to get around without an automobile. Younger, you know, uh, uh, millennials, for, for example, are uh, we're, we're finding that they want to uh, they want a more walkable, a more bikeable community. Having transit that connects is something that really helps with that. To be able to walk more, to be able to ride your bicycle, it's, so it's healthier, it's more environmentally friendly, it's more economical. Uh, and by the way, what happens with uh, with uh, light rail uh, that's different from from bus lines and even bus rapid transit? I mean, uh, the the most important thing is it's an investment in in a community. It's a it's infrastructure investment. So it does it's it's permanent there. It's actually more reliable. Uh, we do have a very reliable bus system, but you can change routes. You can you can remove routes. But when you put light rail, it's permanent. It attracts investment. Uh, we call it transit-oriented investment, uh, and uh, people want to be around, businesses want to be around light rail lines. Uh, people want to be around light rail lines because it does provide for convenience. Businesses want it because uh, they'll have more access to customers. Um, customers will have more access to their businesses. So, uh, yeah, this is something that's essential. It's You've seen other cities. Uh, Denver is a really good example. The other thing about light rail is that it... Uh, there was a study done in St. Louis County that property values have increased up to 30% after the light rail was put in, um, within uh, a third of a third of a mile of the um, of the transit of the of the line. So, uh, so there has a tremendous amount of uh, impact, uh, even more so than the bus lines. Big Ma time. Mayor, one more question before you go. Do you believe that the federal government's decision to keep the NGA in the city and move it to the north side might help the city leverage more federal funding for improved transit because otherwise they're, they're not going to have investment in the area around their new facility? Yes, uh, that was part of the discussion that we had with NGA. Now, NGA does not, uh, they, they don't make the decisions on transit funding through the Department of Transportation, but this is a federal agency that serves the, the federal government. And uh, part of what we want to do is take the opportunity of having NGA to, to, to hook up and to support the uh, north south uh, Metrolink. We're all, it's also in a promise zone which is a federal designation. I don't need to get into details, but we get preference for federal, uh, for federal uh, dollars there, and also it's, it's right adjacent to a choice neighborhood. Again, another federal program where we, we're supposed to get uh, uh, preferences for various things. So we think that all helps. It's still going to be a heavy lift, but we need to start pushing. Uh, right now we need, to, we need to start pushing hard. St. Louis Mayor Francis Slay, thanks for joining us. Uh, My pleasure. Appreciate it. Talking about Metro Lake expansion, it's something that I want to hear from you, the callers here on the Big 550 KTRS. Real quick, one more time, because we're going to get to callers in a little bit. 969 KTRS, 1 888 550 5877. Line up now. You're listening to Tony Messenger on the Big 550.